Hello everyone, welcome to another part of the video. So we're looking at part 4 of chapter 1 right now. So we're going to learn how to uh, solve any quadratic equation using the completing the square form. Uh, in other words, you are solving by completing the square. Okay, so um, well, we also call it completing the square method. Then there are many ways of uh, saying this. Okay, so let's look at um, uh, an equation. You can see that this equation equal to 0. If I were to ask you to solve this, you notice that this is already in the completed square form, right? So uh, there are two ways to do this. If I look at the left uh, side method A, so what we do is uh, we're going to take this, we're going to expand this using the um, A plus B bracket square, right? So we're going to get this, then minus 20 stays. I simplify, I get this equals 0. I whack it into the quadratic equation, use the app in the calculator, I solve. Okay, so this is one way of doing it. Generally, most people will do it this way. However, if you look at method B, there's a better way of doing this, especially when they already give it to you in this form, uh, uh, with a bracket square. It's called completed square form. So, um, if we start from here, now solving is always the same, right? Eventually, I want 1x equal to something. So, if you look at the x here, there's only 1x here. But the problem is the x is trapped inside a bracket square. So we need to free it from the bracket square by doing the counter to it, right? So you know square is the opposite of square root. So if I square root, I actually can get rid of this bracket square. Then I'm left with the x plus 3. So x is free up already. Okay, so but I cannot just square root everything because when I square root two things, it's actually more complicated than you think. So the tactic here is to get the 20, the negative 20 to the right side. So at this point, then when the bracket square is alone, I'm going to square root. And after I square root, this bracket square no more becomes x plus 3. And then, of course, when I square root the right side, it becomes plus minus square root 20. You notice I never pressed the calculator to calculate square root 20 yet. Not yet. Okay. So at this point, remember, I want 1x, right? But I have 1x plus 3. So clearly, this plus 3 needs to go to the other side. That's why you see that uh, the next step will be 1x, and this 3 goes to the other side, becomes minus 3, minus 3. So why are there two answers? Because uh, if you square root, there's two answers. It's plus, minus. So it's positive square root 20 and negative square root 20. That's why you see that the answer is positive square root 20 minus 3, and negative square root 20 also minus 3. Take note that is both are minus 3 because when the positive 3, you minus both sides by 3, both sides on the right side has the minus 3. And then at the end, you press the calculator, square root 20, then you minus 3, you get this 2. Okay? So on the right side here, this is what we call solving by completing the square. Now, um, it's, it's not really like a matter of which one is faster. Between this way and this way, they are probably about the same. This way might, might be a bit faster. But sometimes you may have to complete the square and then you do this. So that's a bit slow. But the problem is, uh, some questions will force you to do it this way. And if you don't do it this way, you do it this way, you're going to get zero marks. Okay, I'm going to show you an example later. So um, right here, I have a two simple example where they actually force you to solve by completing the square. So where is the forcing? This word hence is where it forces you. So if you read the, sent, uh, the question, say that I give you a, a gen any term, ask you to do this, which is completing the square, and after that, I want you to solve the same thing equals zero. You notice it's the same thing. So you end up with something like that equals zero. And, you know, and then it becomes something like this, then you do it the same way. So uh, you, can, you can watch this QR code to see how it's done, and then you can practice some more using here. Okay, so this one should be easy, but I want to show an example before we go off. Uh, a difficult example where they force you in a not very obvious way to solve by completing the square. So let's, let's look at this question. They ask you, uh, what must you add to this to obtain a perfect square? So uh, this is quite standard by now. You should know at this point you should know that this is the coefficient of x, which is negative seven over five, divided by two, then bracket square. So that's why it's here. See, negative seven over five divided by two, then the whole thing bracket square, which is aka this one lah. Go to this answer. You must add this. So where is the forcing? The forcing is here using the above, which is the so-called number that you must add. So using this, solve this. 
and this is very not very obvious right so you see um, I need to solve this, this is I need to start here that's why I see my working starts here exactly here and then um, how do I use this okay so in order to use this you need to have this right so this x square uh, minus 705x needs to appear so I start from here my thinking is okay I need to make these appear when I start here so you know, this is very AMS huh? so in when we do such things we need to make sure uh, this x square appears we always aim for the highest power we match the highest power the rest will fix itself so if you look at the x uh, x square here is negative 2 over 3 x square I want 1 x square so how do you get from negative 2 over 3 x square to 1 x square you simply divide by this number Okay, so you can see that I right here. I, I like to write the x square first, so I wrote it here, and then uh, I don't like to divide by negative number. So I'm going to um, shift all this to the right side, and hence I get all the the sign will change, right? So you see the plus and minus will change. So I'm starting with here. So with two third x square, I want it to be one x square. So everything I divide by two third. So divide by two third. Divide by two third. Divide by two third. Divide by two third. I end up with this and now you see once I match the x square the negative 7 over 5 x naturally appears it balance out one okay so once I achieve this to complete the square I simply need to add this one right it's here from here I need to add this so I add and I need to minus back and then I copy down that 3 over 16 at the end equal to 0. And then as we've always, this 3 will become the completed square. I go and count this and at the same time I shift to the right side to get this. And then from here how do I solve? Both sides square root. And then this 7 over 10 I need to move it over to become plus here. So it's plus minus, then plus 7 over 10, and then you go and calculate and leave it in fraction. So how do you leave it in fraction? In, in this case, it happens that 1, 2, 1 is a perfect square. It's actually, uh, if I'm not wrong, 11 square. And then 400 is 20 square. If you press calculator, you will still get this uh, fraction anyway. So this is an example of a difficult question. Okay, so uh, before we end this, I want to like talk about uh, one very common misconception that I see people do, especially when they are completing the square. All their life, they, do, they don't know they are doing it wrong. Okay, so I ask you, what is the difference between expression and equation? People write this all the time, they don't realize there's a difference. So if you look on the left side, this is an expression. This equal to this, equal to this, equal to this, equal to this. Okay? This, on the other hand, is an equation because I have something equal to something. Left side equal to right side. This has no left and right. It's only this equal, 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 equal. Whereas this one is something equal to something. There's a left and right. So that's the fundamental difference between expression and equation. So, so the, the most powerful thing about equation that is I can do things like both side times minus 1. Both side do things. But here, I cannot both side because there's no both side. There's only one side. Okay, so if, if you look at the, the question, this is a bit tricky eh? because the, all, all your life you have been doing positive x squared. But this one is negative x squared. So you can see that I, I'm unable to do this because our, our tactic won't work. So in order to make our tactic work, our x square must be positive. So I take out the negative one and I'm left with this. So I just ignore the negative one for the time being and I do this completed square as we have learned. See? So the negative one stays from the magic number is minus 4. So plus minus 4, minus 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 4. The 3 continues and this 3 become this, blah blah blah. And then eventually I times the minus 1 back in. So this is the correct answer. Okay, whereas when I have this uh, completed, uh, if I, I have to solve this by completing the square, uh, I cannot complete the square here. So, but, uh, but I can both side times minus 1 to achieve this. This is legal, but you can't do this here. A lot of people will, oh, everything times minus 1, and then they will 
get this and then they complete this as the as the answer. This is wrong because there's you cannot times anything here. Okay, so this is how we do it if you're solving. But when it comes to expression, you can't do this uh, both side times something. So it's a it's a fundamental misconception that many many students have. Okay, so uh, we've come to the end of uh, this part. Uh, maybe there's just one last part, so I just want to talk about it quickly. Uh, this is uh, the last part. You don't need to know this, but this, this QR code will actually show you how you actually obtain this quadratic equation. It actually comes from completing the square. It's pretty interesting. You, you don't need to know this for exam sake, but uh, for information, this is a good piece of info to know. Okay, so hope you learned something. Thank you and bye-bye.